Carnotaurus is a genus of a lightly built, theropod dinosaur that lived in South America during the late Cretaceous period, probably sometime between 71 and 69 million years ago. The only species is Carnotaurus sastri. Known from a single well-preserved skeleton, it is one of the best understood theropods from the southern hemisphere. Carnotaurus is a derived member of the Ablosauridae, a group of large theropods that occupied the large predatorial niche in the southern land masses of Gondwana during the late Cretaceous. Within the Ablosauridae, the genus is often considered a member of the Brachyrostra, a clade of short snouted forms restricted to South America. Carnotaurus was a large but lightly built predator. The only known individual was about 7.5 to 8 meters in length, making Carnotaurus one of the largest Abelisaurides. Height would have been about 2.5 meters, meaning it would be about as large as average Indian elephant, which are smaller than African elephants. A 2016 study found that only Pycnonemosaurus, at 8.9 meters, was longer than Carnotaurus estimated at 7.8 meters. Its mass is estimated to have been between 1300 to 2100 kilograms in separate studies that used different estimation methods. Carnotaurus was a highly specialized theropod, as seen especially in characteristics of the skull, the vertebrae and the forelimbs. The pelvis and hind limbs, on the other hand, remained relatively conservative, resembling those of the more basal Ceratosaurus. Both the pelvis and hind limb were long and slender. The left femur of the individual measures 103 cm in length, but shows an average diameter of only 11 cm. The only skeleton was unearthed in 1984 by an expedition led by Argentinian paleontologist Jose Bonaparte. The skeleton is well preserved and articulated, with only the posterior two-thirds of the tail, much of the lower leg, and the hind feet being destroyed by weathering. The skeleton belonged to an adult individual, as indicated by the fused sutures in the brain case. It was found lying on its right side, showing a typical death pose with the neck bent back over the torso. Unusually, it is preserved with extensive skin impressions. In view of the significance of these impressions, a second expedition was started to reinvestigate the original excavation site, leading to the recovery of several additional skin patches. The skull was deformed during fossilization, with the snout bones of the left side displaced forwards relative to the right side, the nasal bones pushed upwards, and the premaxilla pushed backwards onto the nasal bones. Deformation also exaggerated the upward curvature of the upper jaw. The snout was more strongly affected by deformation than the rear part of the skull, possibly due to the higher rigidity of the latter. In top or bottom view, the upper jaws were less U-shaped than the lower jaws, resulting in an apparent mismatch. This mismatch is the result of deformation acting from the sides, which affected the upper jaws but not the lower jaws, possibly due to the greater flexibility of the joints within the latter. The skull, measuring 59.6 cm in length, was proportionally shorter and deeper than in any other large carnivorous dinosaur. The snout was moderately broad, not as tapering as seen in more basal theropods like Ceratosaurus, and the jaws were curved upwards. A prominent pair of horns protruded obliquely above the eyes. These horns, formed by the frontal bones, were thick and cone-shaped, internally solid, somewhat vertically flattened in cross-section, and measured 15 centimeters in length. Bonaparte, in 1990, suggested that these horns would probably have formed the bony cores of much longer keratinous sheaths. Mauricio Cerrone and colleagues, in 2020, agreed that the horns supported keratinous sheaths, but argued that these sheaths would not have been greatly longer than the bony cores. The forelimbs were proportionally shorter than in any other large carnivorous dinosaurs, including Tyrannosaurus. The forearm was only a quarter the size of the upper arm. There were no wrist bones in the hand, so that the finger base bones articulated directly with the forearm. The hand showed four basic digits, 
though apparently only the middle two of these ended in finger bones, while the fourth consisted of a single splint-like metacarpal, that may have represented an external spur. The fingers themselves were fused and immobile, and may have lacked claws. Carnotaurus differed from all other abelisaurides in having proportionally shorter and more robust forelimbs, and in having the fourth, splint-like metacarpal as the longest bone in the hand. A 2009 study suggests that the arms were vestigial in abelisaurides, because nerve fibers responsible for stimulus transmission were reduced, to an extent seen in today's emus and kiwis, which also have vestigial forelimbs. Canarotaurus was possibly one of the fastest dinosaurs, if not the fastest among large theropods. It is estimated that it could reach speed between 48 to 56 km per hour, which is more than speed limit inside cities in some countries. It is due to its characteristic tail vertebrae, which were unique in its shape among theropods. Caudal ribs of vertebrae were V-shaped, allowing for additional space for muscle called cordofemoralis. Mass per leg was calculated at 111 to 137 kilograms. However this speed came at a cost of maneuverability, because due to enlarged cordofemoralis, muscles responsible for stability and tail movement were reduced. Meaning that the ability to make sharp turns would have been diminished, because the hip and tail had to be turned simultaneously, unlike in other theropods. Carnotaurus was the first theropod dinosaur discovered with a significant number of fossil skin impressions. These impressions, found beneath the skeleton's right side, come from different body parts, including the lower jaw, the front of the neck, the shoulder girdle, and the rib cage. The largest patch of skin corresponds to the anterior part of the tail. Originally, the right side of the skull also was covered with large patches of skin, this was not recognized when the skull was prepared, and these patches were accidentally destroyed. However, the surface texture of several skull bones allows for inferences on their probable covering. A hummocky surface with grooves, pits, and small openings is found on the sides and front of the snout and indicates a scaly covering, possibly with flat scales as in today's crocodilians. The top of the snout was sculptured with numerous small holes and spikes, this texture can probably be correlated with a cornified pad. Such a pad also occurred in Majungasaurus but was absent in Abelisaurus and Rugops. A row of large scales did probably surround the eye, as indicated by a hummocky surface with longitudinal grooves on the lacrimal and postorbital bones. Analyses of the jaw structure of Carnotaurus, suggest that the animal was capable of quick bites, but not strong ones. Quick bites are more important than strong bites when capturing small prey, as shown by studies of modern-day crocodiles. Researchers also noted a high degree of flexibility within the skull and especially the lower jaw, somewhat similar to modern snakes. Elasticity of the jaw would have allowed Carnotaurus to swallow small prey items whole. In addition, the front part of the lower jaw was hinged, and thus able to move up and down. When pressed downwards, the teeth would have projected forward, allowing Carnotaurus to spike small prey items, when the teeth were curved upwards, the now backward projecting teeth would have hindered the caught prey from escaping. Carnotaurus may therefore have fed mainly on relatively small prey, but also was able to hunt large dinosaurs. In 2009, Mazetta and colleagues estimated a bite force of around 3,341 newtons. However others suggest that jaws were not suited for high precision catching of small prey but for delivering slashing wounds to weaken big prey. As a consequence, according to this study, Carnotaurus must have mainly preyed upon large animals, like sauropods, possibly by ambush.